Hey there Cavaliers, welcome to this edition of the Cavalier Sports Report. I'm your host Gene Quintero. Joining me today is NJCAA Women's Basketball Hall of Famer and JCCC Athletic Hall of Famer, former coach Barbara Gill. Thank you for joining me today Barbara Gill. Thank you, it's my honor. Well first of all, I have to start off by saying welcome back to Johnson County Community College. How do you feel, how do you feel being back on this beautiful campus after so many years? I feel so proud. Mm -hmm. because back in those days it was very small mm -hmm. but because of a lot of people's dedication and hard work it, it's become what it is today so I'm thankful for all of those wor hard workers. So you mentioned it was pretty small when you started off here what changes have you noticed since you started working and even today how big it is? Uh, honey how long do you have? Well you know <laughs> right. <laughs> it's changed uh, well in the old days you know we had the fitness center in the basement and we could just uh, come upstairs and go across and have lunch <laughs> oh. or go over to the, Dr. Carlson's office and you know and so it was real small oh, okay. and uh, our fitness you know our athletic department was small mm -hmm. one big happy family. Yeah. Nowadays you have to walk a whole mile to get from one place to another and well as you know the Winter Olympics just wrapped up in Russia and I hear that you were involved with the women's basketball team back in the 80s can you describe your Olympic experience for me? Yes, I can, but first I'd like to give uh, thanks and praise to, uh, to Mr. Orville Gregory, our athletic director, who actually hired me okay. uh, and uh, gave us the opportunity to, ha to have the fitness center. But he also <clears throat> encouraged and almost insisted that I be a part of the United States uh, Basketball Association because I had no clue and I had no experience except with small colleges and small high schools. And so it was, he said, Barbara, you cannot not do this. So I owe him all the credit for actually insisting. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful experience. Eight years I worked with the Olympic program. Oh, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the Lifetime Fitness Center. Mm -hmm. Should I say the Barbara Gill Lifetime Fitness Center? How big of a role did you play in its planning process for its construction? You mean not this construction? No, but no. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it was a basement, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> they had some weights, and uh, we had, um, you know, just before you can just kind of jog and stuff. And so I asked Mr. Gregory, I said, "Is it okay if we <clears throat> get a couple of fitness center from Hydro Fitness uh, equipment yeah. and start a fitness center?" And he said. Um, well, that sounds like a good idea as long as we stay within the budget. Mm -hmm. And so we did. So we started in the weight room uh, downstairs of the original gym. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to throw this in just for fun because there was a scale there. Yeah. And people, after we kind of had five or six pieces of equipment, people would be working out and they'd come in and they'd say, well, Barbara, I haven't lost any weight. And I said, well, what are you eating? And they said, da, da, da. And I said, well, are they handcuffing your arms behind your back and shoving the food down your throat mm -hmm. and then uh, they said well the scales show this and I said okay we're gonna we're gonna take the scales out so we took the scales out and then I wanted some scales that we would call dial your own weight mm -hmm. so if you wanted to weigh if I wanted to weigh 130 pounds I'd dial that in I'd step up I weighed 130 pounds so okay. oh that's a terrific idea I love <laughs> well, that now you're also a big advocator in adding fitness classes to the school's curriculum mm -hmm. Um, what was it a challenge to get those types of classes available for students? Was it what? Was it a challenge to get those classes no, available we, for students? No, there weren't really very many challenges. Um, I just would talk to Mr. Gregory about things and, and he'd go over and talk to Dr. Carlson, Dr. Radakovich or any of the, the big shots. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, if you, if you, if you sh tell somebody the real reasons and why you want to do it and the pros and cons, and uh, believe in what you want, then it's not that hard. So I, I cannot remember it being a challenge. Hardest challenge I ever had was trying to get off some committee and Dr. Carlson said, Barbara, you can't, so. Mm -hmm. All right, now you just mentioned here a few uh, seconds ago about you know, eating right, you know, how the, some of the people are not losing weight. And the United States has really been pushing that here recently. How important is it for you to make sure that every student is eating nutritionally and also exercising as well? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's the bottom line is taking responsibility for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think if we take responsibility for ourselves uh, and not worry about what the government says on labels and the government does this, it's taking responsibility, uh, smaller portions, eating. Your, your body actually is designed for like five 
diff, not meals, but mm -hmm. five different nutritious things during the day to keep okay. the metabolism and everything. So I think it's very important. And without exercise, you know, without taking care of the muscles, then muscle weighs more than fat. So yeah. there again, if you get overweight and you don't have any muscles, if you had muscles, you'd weigh twice as much and you'd be less as healthy. So mm -hmm. no, it's very important for you to eat right. And I'm still on Bobby about that. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, so you mentioned Bobby, your husband, yeah. several times. Mm -hmm. You know, what role did he play? Why, why are you here in Kansas City? For two years, went to Baylor. He was on a uh, scholarship, and I worked three jobs. <clears throat> and uh, we were engaged for four years because we couldn't afford to get married. Mm -hmm. Then we got married, and he was uh, in national. He was in the army for a while. Then he was football coach. So we moved, as I said. So that's how we got here. Mm -hmm. uh, after moving, this is true. We moved 26 times, and. Uh, but anyway, he was working for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. he, was a, uh, he was a scout, and then he was assistant personnel director. <clears throat> had a heart attack in 89, but he's my, uh, we've just been married, our, we just had our anniversary. We've been married for 57 years, and we've been friends for 62. Okay. And he's why mm -hmm. we came to Kansas City. Now, while you were coaching here, you seem to have done it all, because you coached the volleyball team, the women's basketball team, and even the softball team. You even started that program. How was it to, you know, start all those teams out, being in charge of all of them? You know, how was it to not have an off season as well? Well, by the time I went to work here at JUCO, excuse me, that's what we used to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had taught at a lot of different places because Bobby was in football. So every, the end of every football season, our furniture looked for the U-Haul truck. So I taught in a lot of different states and, uh, and most of them in public schools, you did everything because nobody else was around to help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Mr. Gregory hired me for <clears throat> one thing and then there was a need for another and then there was a need for another and so you just do it. And when we started the softball team, I st we had the volleyball and the basketball team and started the softball team because in Johnson County it's a huge softball mm -hmm. area. And um, <clears throat> so we started it and I uh, told Mr. Gregory, I said, can we start? He said, yes, do you have enough money in your basketball and volleyball budget? And I said, yes, sir. And so we did. And we saved the money. And, and how was it? Awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. Okay. I mean, you know, when you love doing what you do, that's your off time. Mm -hmm. Now, in your time here, what do you think was your biggest achievement while coaching? <laughs> biggest achievement? Mm -hmm. I can't think of any biggest achievement. I think it was a, it took, I took great pride in the yeah. kids taking responsibility and graduating and mm -hmm. getting on with their lives. <clears throat> And along that note, in 1988, when I was working with the Olympics yeah. in uh, Seoul, Korea, and um, that season was my last season here at Johnson County Community College mm -hmm. coaching basketball. <clears throat> my greatest accomplishment was finishing that season. We were 0 and 24. Okay. We did not win a game. But I gained so much from that team because they knew that what I was trying to teach them, what, it's not the score, it's what you've given and how you've given it. And then to go on with the Olympic team who had some of the greatest players in the world and to be the best team in the world, and we were of course 24 and 0, oh. yeah. <laughs> and won the gold medal in the world and the world championships mm -hmm. that year and the goodwill games the yeah. year before that. But those, I, I put that 0 oh, and 24 team right up there because they never quit. Mm -hmm. They never missed practice and never quit. I would say that was my greatest accomplishment was, their greatest accomplishment was getting me through it mm -hmm. because they, they did it well. I could have given up or thrown in the towel. Yeah. I, I'd say that. It's amazing how it doesn't take to win, you know, to learn a lot from the That's game right. and learn a lot about yourself as a player. That's right. And now, back in 1977, when you first started working here, what was your motivator to sign on and coach here? Okay. <clears throat> I was teaching at Shawnee Mission North, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> one of my ex-players from Washington Baptist College, which was our first job, Bobby was a coach, and I was, there you go, I started out, I, I was hired to, to coach basketball, and 
teach physical education. I was the only woman teacher. I was the only physical education teacher. Well, the only woman teacher. Mm -hmm. And I coached basketball and volleyball and uh, tennis mm -hmm. and synchronized swimming and okay. swimming. Okay. But <clears throat> I think, um, back to what you said, I had a player there, mm -hmm. uh, lots of players. One of them was Marion Otwell. that was an awesome player from a little old country town in Arkansas. She went on, graduated, played, you know, wh whatever. Then she ended up at Panola County Community College. Mm -hmm. um, I was at teaching at Duke, uh, teaching at China Mission North. Her team came to the first national tournament mm -hmm. up here. They won. She told Mr. Gregory, one of my ex, my ex coach is teaching at China Mission North. Mm -hmm. You need to you need to hire her because mm -hmm. he had just had. It. So that's how I got the job. It wasn't me. It was her. It was her telling him to hire me. And so he called and he said, uh, I have an appointment for you. Mm -hmm. That's how I got the job. Well, I'm sure that JCCC was very happy to have you here in the time that you were here. I don't and, know. And well, thank you very much for joining me today. I very, <laughs> very much appreciate it. Thank you. And that's all for this edition of the Cavalier Sports Report. I'm your host, Gene Cantero. See you next time, Cavs. Mm -hmm.